How is a game with incredible graphics, next level art direction, pristine sound design, and big name actors so f***ing bad? To truly understand the disappointment that came with the release of Callisto Protocol, we have to revisit the original trilogy that inspired the game, talking about why comparing the two is so important and why fans were so eager to get their hands on this game once it announced. Dead Space 1, or just Dead Space, was an absolute masterpiece. Upon its release, it introduced unique gameplay mechanics that nailed the horror suspense aesthetics in a way that no other game had done before, generating an army of spooky nerd fans. Dead Space 2 followed, bringing in more of the spooky goodness that fans loved, and with mixed feelings among the player based on whether it was better than its predecessor or not, one can argue at the very least that it was a great entry to the series. Then, with money bags in their eyes, EA pushed out Dead Space 3, going into what we like to call a development hell. The direction of the game was skewed by time crunch and money. Ben Wanat? Ben Wen... When at, when at, when at, what? Want it. Huh? Ben, the game's creative director, wanted to put out a darker, grittier experience for the third game in the series, but what we ended up with was a sort of spooky, sort of not co-op action adventure, which really wasn't fitting. Due to this, the game was not well received by the established fan base. Speaking of fan base, if you do end up enjoying this video, once it's over, head down below and hit that like button and consider subscribing to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks, love you. Fast forward to sometime in 2020, honestly, I don't remember when because the whole year is kind of a blur but the Callisto Protocol was announced and it was to be directed by one of the co-creators of Dead Space, Glenn Sclo Sclo Schofield for fuck's sake. To put it in layman's terms, the Callisto Protocol was considered a do-over, a spiritual successor as they put it. What Dead Space 3 was supposed to be taking EA out of the equation. This generated massive amounts of hype, to put it lightly. Every trailer that they put out, everyone was like, oh, it seemed too good to be true because it was. What we got was essentially an illusion of a masterpiece, a shell of a great game, a great with so much potential, but none of it was reached. Now, obviously, this is my opinion, but it's backed by a couple of things that I want to point out to you. First and foremost, $60 only gets you about 12 to 14 hours of gameplay. It's got no replayability whatsoever. And by replayability, I'm not referring to the fact that if you enjoyed it, you decide to play again for shits and giggles. No. When I say replayability, I'm referring to the incentives the game itself puts together to keep you engaged and actively wanting to play more to get out of the game. For example, a new game plus feature or lots of collectibles, changes in the story, etc, etc. You get the gist. This game has none of that. The combat and getting past the fact that it's kind of weird and wonky was actually some sort of enjoyable at some points, but really only with single targets. Due to the nature of the mechanics, if you faced any more than just one enemy or if you faced any sort of boss enemy, the combat was dog water. Clunky, not fun, barely worked correctly. Speaking of enemy types, you get about halfway through the game and you've seen them all multiple times. The lack of enemy variety in the game is almost laughable. It made the game stale and leaves you wanting more. Fighting bosses is literal torture. It doesn't present a challenge in a way that you would want a challenge. What I mean by this is what makes it difficult isn't reacting to the enemy and figuring out how to play better. What makes it difficult is the fact that the combat is dog water. There is no dodge. Instead, you hold the directional stick one way, hoping to God that you're at the right angle so that your character moves out of the way eventually at some point. It, it just, it wasn't fun. The game setting did look incredible. A lot of potential for immersion, but often in creepy hallways or walking through an area that otherwise would have been great for building suspense. For some reason, the game played really loud action music, making what would have been a great jump scare or three really predictable. Enemy design, character design, and level design was really awe-inspiring, except I played on PC and seeing these things at a whopping three frames per second broke immersion quite a bit. Last but not least, it's unfortunate to have to point out that the story was really boring. There were moments that displayed what I thought could have created awesome lore, but they rushed past these moments to give us really predictable plot points in an ending that really wasn't very memorable. When I say there was a lot of potential, I mean this is a great starting point for a game, where they could have built upon it by improving combat mechanics and adding more detail to the lore and story, which in turn could have increased the length of the game. Unfortunately, they didn't really do any of that, and in turn, we got a disappointment.